hello viewers sir. welcome back to the course on scientific computing using matlab so today we'll uh, continue with our lecture 20 so in the last lecture we have st just started with the gauss elimination method uh, for the direct uh, method so this is we are uh, writing gauss elimination method So, in this case, what we are going to do, I am have a system A x equal to B that is n cross n and then I will write down my augmented matrix A. So, this is my augmented matrix. and we will convert this matrix into a upper triangle matrix and then using back substitution we will get the solution, we will solve the system. So, let us uh, deal uh, start with this Gauss elimination method. So, for example, so let us take 3 by 3 system. So, I will just define a 3 by 3 system A 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 x 2 plus a 1 3 x 3 is equal to b 1 <coughs> a 2 1 x 1 a 2 2 x 2 plus a 2 3 x 3 is equal to b 2 a 3 1 x 1 plus a 3 2 x 2 plus a 3 3 x 3 is equal to b 3. So, this is my system A x is equal to b and I am taking 3 by 3 matrix. Now, the so this is my a system of equation. Now, what I want to do? I want to reduce this one into the upper triangular matrix. So, I want to make this element 0. So, this element this element and this element. This one I want to make 0 because only then you will be able to get the upper triangular matrix. So, let us start with this one. <coughs> so, step 1. So, in the step 1 we define a take a multiplier. So, I call it m 2 1. So, what is the m 2 1? What I will do is that I will divide this row by a 1 1. So, I will get the 1 only and to remove this value of a 2 1. So, now what I do? So, before that I just write the matrix a a 1 1 a 1 2 a 1 3 and then b 1 a 2 1 a 2 2 a 2 3 a 3 1 a 3 2 a 3 3 and this is my b 2 and this is my b 3. So, I, this is my augmented matrix a Okay. So, uh, now I whatever I am going to do, I am going to do with this augmented matrix. Generally, we represent it by tilde. Now, I take a multipliers a to 1. So, to multiply what I will do, I will divide this first row by a 1 1 and multiply by a to 1 with the negative sign and then I will add to this one. So, this will make it 0. So, I will take a multiplier a to 1 and then I will write minus a 2 1 by a 1 1. So, this is the multiplier I am going to find out. Now, I'll write down multiply the first row that is r 1 with m 2 1 and add 
to the second row to the row to the to the second row because I want to make this element 0. So, that is my condition. So, what I do? I will multiply the first row with m21 and add to the second row. So, I can write as a m21 to r1 adding to r2 and the effect goes to the r2. So, this will I am going to do the first one. The second one is same. Now, my next after doing this I want to make this element also 0. So, how to make this one? The same one take a multiplier m 3 1 because I want to make the this element 0. So, I will call it m 3 1. So, it is same as a 3 1 divided by a 1. So, divide, dividing the first row by a 1 1 and multiply it by minus of a 3 1 and then I will call it m 3 1 multiply by r 1 adding to r 3 and the effect go to r 3. So, after these two steps my system will reduce to so, after after above steps. So, step number 1 which consists of 2 more steps the sub steps. So, after these steps I will get the system the system becomes So, I will get the system a 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 x 2 plus a 1 3 x 3 is equal to b 1 because there is no change in the first row. Okay. The next thing is that I will get here a 2 2 x 2. So, I will call it as 2 plus a 2 3 x 3 is equal to b 2. Okay. So, I will get this one then I will get here a 3 2 x 2 plus a 3 3 x 3 is equal to b 3 2. So, this 2 is writing here. So, that is the after step 1 or after iteration 1 or after step 1. So, I am getting the value of here. So, what is the value of a 2 2? So, why a 2 2 will be? So, I am multiplying this one by m 2 1. So, I will write down is it. So, this is a 1 2 multiply by m 2 1 and adding to a 2 2. So, that is the we are getting. So, from here I can write if you see from here it will be equal to a 2 2 minus of a 2 1 a 1 1 into a 1 2. So, that is the value of the this coefficient. Similarly, I can define my a 2 3 so, this will be again same as a 2 3 plus m 2 1 a 1 3. So, that will getting the new value. Similarly, a 3 2 will be what? So, it will be same as multiplying and adding. So, it will be a 3 2 plus m 3 1 a 1 2 okay. and then a 2 3 3 will be a 3 3 plus m 3 1 a 1 3. So, this will give me and then from here I can write my b 2 and b 3 also. So, after doing this one my b 2 So, b 2 will be what? b 1 
multiply by m21 so i am multiplying this one by m21 and adding to b2 b3 multiplying b1 by m31 plus b3 so that is my new values and i am getting my uh, system in this way now if you see from here now i have to deal with this system 2 by 2 system so i have to remove this value to make it the upper triangular so now i do the step 2 so in the step 2 i am dealing with this system so this system i can call it double star so i will apply the same way so in this case what i'll do is now i will define my uh, new multiplier so i will define multiplier m 3 2 because i want to make this element zero so that will be what minus a 3 2 divided by a 2 2 and whatever we are getting at the this step so i will do the process here so now i will write down multiply r2 with m32 adding to r3 and effect is going to r3 so after doing this one i will get my system because here only i have to deal with only one element then I will get the system. So, this is I will get a 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 x 2 and a 1 3 x 3 is equal to b 1. Then I will get a 2 2 x 2 plus a 2 3 x 3 is equal to b 2 2 and then I will get here a 3 3 3 x 3 and that is equal to b 3 3. So, this is the system we are getting. Now, from here we can write that my a 3 3 and 3 will be what? So, it will be a 2 3 multiply by m 3 2 and adding to a 3 3 at the second step. So, that will be my A 3 3 and my B 3 will be B 2 multiply by 3 2 and adding to B 3 at the step 2. So, this is the value we are getting and after getting uh, after this one. So, this system now we getting the equivalent system so this is i'm writing here so equivalent system can be written as so now this equivalent system can be written as a 11 one, one, a 12 one, a 1 3, a 2 2, a 2 3, a 3 3 and all other elements are 0 and that is equal to x 1, x 2, x 3 and this is b 1, b 2 and b 3. Now, so after getting this value, now, using back substitution, we are getting x 3 will be b 3 3. From here, my x 2 will be b 2 minus a 2 3 x 3 divided by a 2 2 
Okay. So, because this will be x 2 a 2 2 plus a 2 3 x 3 is equal to b 2 and and my x 1 will be b 1 minus a 1 2 x 2 minus a 1 3 x 3 divided by a 1 1. So, if you from here you can see that it is provided a is not equal to 0, it is provided a 1 is not equal to 0. So, by the back substitution now we are able to solve my system. So, this is called the Gauss elimination method, but the only if you see that the so we have done this one for 3 by 3 matrix. So, the same way we can go for n by n matrix and so from here I can write down Gauss elimination method is is involved with with n minus with n minus 1 steps for n cross n matrix because in the previous one we have a 3 by 3 cross matrix. So, in within 2 steps we are able to solve this one. So, if I have a n cross n matrix using the n minus 1 steps we are able to convert the matrix into the upper triangle and then we can solve the system. So, this Gauss, Gauss elimination involves n minus 1 steps. Now, the problem comes here. So, where is the problem? Where is the problem? So, the problem is that what will happen if A11 is 0 or very small? So, if it is 0 then we cannot proceed or if it is very very small then we already know that we lose significant digit. In the previous lecture we have seen that if we are dividing by with a very small number then we lose significant digit. So, in that case we also this is not permissible. So, what will happen if I have a A11 or a 2 2 or a 3 3 are very small. So, in that case my Gauss elimination method will not work and it will not give you the exact solution. So, to deal to get away from to get rid of this of this problem what do we do? we take a pivoting partial pivoting. So, in the previous lectures uh, in the previous uh, slide, so these elements we call it this element maybe this element and this elements they are called pivot. Pivot means it is a very important elements. So, now we have to deal with this one that how we can remove this difficulty when we have this uh, elements at the diagonals are very small in number. So, that can be done with the help of partial pivoting. So, what is the partial pivoting? So, in the partial pivoting what we do is that suppose we have a uh, equation system. So, let I have a my system I have a n cross n system a 2 1 a n 1 a 2 2 a 2 n a n n. So, what do we do is that so, we will do step 1. So, in the step 1, 
what do we do? So then the step one in the in the elimination, the first column. is searched for the largest element in magnitude. Okay, so, we have to deal with the magnitude, it may be a negative also and brought as the first pivot in magnitude by interchanging the first and by interchanging the rows. Row means whatever the row has the largest element with the first row. So, we can interchange that one and the same procedure and this is done with all the subsequent steps. So, I can call it not the step 1. So, this is the procedure basically. So, the first column is searched for the largest element in magnitude and brought to the first pivot in the magnitude by interchanging the row and this is done with all the subsequent steps. So, in this case what will happen? Like suppose I have a system like this one, somebody gives me the system, it is uh, 0, 1, 2 and 1, 5 and then it is maybe minus 3, 2, 0, 1 okay. and somebody asked me to solve the system x 1, x 2, x 3 is equal to maybe 1, 2, minus 1. So, what I will do that if I want to apply the Gauss elimination then this element is 0. So, what I do? I will find out the first step is that I will find out the largest value in magnitude. So, maybe in magnitude the largest value is this one because if I take the modulus value of minus 5 that is a 5. So, what I do in this case I will do the R 1 3. So, after doing the R 1 3 what I will get? I will get the value minus 5 0 1 1 minus 3 2 0 1 2 and x1, x2, x3 will not change because I am just transferring interchanging the uh, equations. So, it will be minus 1, 2, 1. I am put taking this equation there and now it is the largest element in magnitude here. Now, I can apply my Gauss elimination method and based on this Gauss elimination method because it is already 0, so then it is a useful for us. So, in this case I will find the upper triangular matrix and will be able to solve able to solve using Gauss elimination. So, this is called the partial pivoting. So, generally we go always go for partial pivoting, but there is a another term also complete pivoting. So, we hardly go for this complete pivoting. So, in this case what we will do? We find the largest element in magnitude in the whole matrix. So, my matrix is n cross n. So, we will find the largest element in magnitude in the whole matrix and brought as a first pivot.
first do it. So, in this case what is happening? So, first pivot by interchanging rows and columns also. So, in this case the variable may be shifting. So, that is called the complete pivoting. So, the problem with that in this case we can interchange the row. So, row is ok, but when we interchange the column then the position of the variable will change. So, then it will make the life much complicated. So, we generally go do not go for complete pivoting, we always go for the partial pivoting. Now, there are some other type of matrices are there which are very useful when we are dealing with the Gauss elimination method and the we call it diagonal dominant. diagonal dominant matrices. So, this is called the diagonal dominant matrices. For example, I have a matrix A. So, a matrix is, so I am talking about the real matrix, okay, is called diagonal dominant is called diagonal dominant matrix if my a i i modulus value is greater than equal to summation of a i j when j is not equal to i and this is true for i 1 to to n. It means that the diagonal elements, the magnitude of the diagonal element is always greater than or equal to the summation of the magnitude of the other elements. So, if it, this is true, then we call it the diagonal dominant matrix. If A i i is strictly greater than this one, then it is called strictly diagonal dominant. Matrix. Okay. So, for example, for example, I take a matrix A is like this one. I get a minus 5, 1, 2, 3, minus 4, 0, 1, 2 and maybe 4. <clears throat> so, in this case what is happening? Now, if you take the diagonal element 5, so this is always greater than 1 plus 2, the other element I am taking. The next is minus 4, so this is greater than 3 plus 0. The next last is 4 is greater than 1 plus 2. So, this is true, then I will say that this is strictly diagonal dominant. matrix or maybe I can take another example like 5, 2, 3 <coughs> and maybe 4, 6, 2 and 2, 2, 3 minus 3 suppose I taking minus 2 this I am taking. So, in the first one 5 so this element because we always go for this pivots the diagonal elements. So, in this case what is happening this 5 is equal to 
minus i, the first row. Second is minus 6 is 4 plus 2. Then the last one is minus 3 is less than 2 plus 2. So, this here it is not uh, satisfying this condition. So, not diagonal dominant. So, from here I can make a statement that if, if A and cross N is diagonal dominant, matrix, if it is a diagonal dominant matrix, then no partial weighting is needed for Gauss elimination. So, in that case, there is no need of doing the partial weighting for applying the Gauss elimination method. So, this is all about in this uh, lecture. So, <clears throat> I hope you have understood that how we can apply the Gauss elimination method and what is the partial pivoting, what is the diagonal dominance matrix. So, in the next lecture, we will continue with this one. So, thanks for viewing, uh, thanks very much.